Hello, fourth graders, Mr. Buckum here for your final lesson in reading this school year, and it is on figurative language. I have my anchor chart here on figurative language, and the definition of figurative language is language enriched by words, images, and figure of speech. And so here we're using similes and metaphors and by making comparisons to one thing to another um, and then using those words like and as. And so some clue words for figurative language are down here. Phrase, illustrates, literal, hyperbole, uh, onomatopoeia are a couple of examples there for figurative language. Using your figurative language identifier, let's go over the different elements of types of figurative language. Uh, the first one that they have is alliteration. And an example of alliteration is Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And so we have several words in a sentence that have the same sound or letter. The other one is a simile, a statement that compares one thing to another using like or as. An example, his cry was like a fire truck siren. The next one is metaphor. And that's a comparison between objects without using words like or as. Don't use them. Metaphors replace one word for another unrelated word. His mouth let out a fire truck siren. In this case, cry has been replaced by fire truck siren. Personification is the next one, giving or attributing a human characteristic action or quality to a non-living thing. And an example is the red purse slumped in exhaustion when she finally set it on the table. And so it sounds like the red purse is alive. The last one, hyperbole, an extreme exaggeration overstatement. He, her tears nearly filled the bathtub to the top. We're gonna go over a few examples so that you can be successful on your independent work. The poem I'm gonna be using for us to be looking for examples of figurative language is called The Final Deployment by Anna Prokos, and it is found in your poetry packet. Selena strapped on her sneakers and ran to the airport like a racehorse sprints to the finish line. She trotted past traffic and trees, zipped over curbs and cracks, and soon reached her final destination, where a thousand of her closest friends waited and turned their owl eyes in her direction. She took a gasp so loud, it was heard on three other continents. Selena spotted her brother, thin, clean-shaven, and a fit fiddle. The siblings stared straight at each other and ran to give hugs that had waited too long to be given. Then, like champions taking their final lap, ran home to proclaim their memories back. As families kissed and hugged and cried a river of tears, Selena kicked off her sneakers that slumped with exhaustion near combat boots that had a million stories to tell. This poem is a great example of using a lot of figurative language from alliterations to metaphors to hyperbole. I think every figure of speech in this poem uh, is there. The next poem that we will be looking at is November Day. And again, we're looking at the figurative language that is used. Looking at that first line, old haggard wind has plucked the trees. And it's giving, you know, something that's haggard is usually something that's really tired, not the wind. So that would be an example of personification right away. 
So as I read it, be thinking, what do we have here as far as figurative language? November day, old haggard wind has plucked the trees like pheasants held between her knees. In rows she hangs them, bare and neat, their bright plumage at her feet. So what figurative language can you, do you identify there? We know there's personification. And we also see like pheasants held between her knees. So pluck the trees like pheasants held between her knees. In rows she hangs them, bare and neat, their brilliant plumage at her feet. Another example of a poem that has lots of figurative language in it is called City Autumn. The air breathes frost, a thin wind beats. Old dust and papers go down gray streets and blows brown leaves with curled up edges as frightened sparrows on window ledges. A snowflake falls like an errant feather. A vagabond draws his cloak together. An old man trots, totters past with a cane, wondering if he'll see spring again. And that was written by Joseph Moncure March. Now, right away in the poem, I see the air breathes frost. And so that's a personification. The line, a snowflake falls like an errant feather. We have that key word there, like, and that gives us a simile. And those would be two that, you know, I quickly found. Can you find several others that are there? Maybe in blows brown leaves with curled up edges might be one that gives us that alliteration sound to it. Now the last poem that we will be using will wrap up our poetry unit and the last lesson. Um, and it is called The Sheaves, and we've read that once before. And, you know, as we're reading it, you want to be thinking about how do the different kinds of figurative language enhance the meaning of a poem? You know, so often I think it just like it paints a picture in your mind. The Sheaves. Where long the shadows of the wind had rolled, Green wheat was yielding to the change assigned, and as by some vast magic undivined, the world was turning slowly into gold. Their days went on till another day, a thousand gold sheaves were lying there, shining and still, but not for long to stay, as if a thousand girls with golden hair might rise from where they slept and go away. So be thinking about the figurative language that was in that poem. <clears throat> As I went back and looked at the poem and I saw the world was turning slowly into gold, that would be a metaphor. And then I'm looking at that <clears throat> as if a thousand girls with golden hair. And that would be personification because the, the gold is the leaves that are on the ground, which I have inferred. So figurative language, an important part of poetry. This is Mr. Buckham saying have a great summer and we will hope to see you in the fall.